Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens. Once again, I teach for the University of Hawaii at the Kapiolani Community College campus. I teach network security and ethical hacking. I also am the managing director of Kapu Technologies, a cybersecurity company right here in the Hawaiian Islands. And to be, today with me, I have two special guests. Don't laugh at me. I almost <laughs> no, had that down. You got it. was pretty good. No, it was pretty it was good fast, until last too. second. It was Andrew Lanny and Gordon Bruce. Hello, How everybody. are you doing, guys? Thanks, brother. Andrew. Uh, Thanks for IST getting us back Technologies in here. right here in Hawaii. You yep. do physical and electronic security. We do. And you're the DFARS master. Are you going to tell us all about uh, it? You think? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Gordon DFARS Bruce trainee. Gordon Bruce so many things that you've done for the state. And thanks for being around. My pleasure. GJB and Associates right now. Uh, waiting to retire sometime in your he's 90s. He's not retired. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's this never rate. retiring. <laughs> this rate. He just well, thinks he's retiring. I keep trying. His customers well, won't let him go. Well, yeah, with billable hours, how can you do it? I know. <laughs> it's hard to say no. So nice. Pay all that money. Well, yeah. Keep raising your rates and they just keep paying. <laughs> makes, makes the governor happy. I mean, every time I cut that GE tax, every I did one yesterday. Wow. And every time I send it oh, in. Oh, you pay quarterly now? Yeah, you're, make, you're making way too much monthly, money. Monthly. Monthly. <laughs> We were talking about federal acquisition regula regulation. Yeah. The DFAR is a defense federal acquisition regulation. Is it system or security? What's that S for in DFARS? I don't think security. we know. Regulations. Regulations. It's oh, the S. Okay, it's, it's just plural. The, yeah, yeah. So the DFARS comes on all your DOD contracts now for the defense industrial base or DIB. Yeah. Right? Pull the FAR up first. We have one slide. we got to keep our slides in order. Well, let's pull them up. I'll get confused. Let's pull up the, uh, the slides. Federal There's, acquisition this regulation. Is, <laughs> this one is the bigger one. And we talked about those, those, just those baseline requirements in the FAR that everybody has, regardless of DFAR. Now, this has been around since 2014. Oh, the FAR we, forever, yeah. We were supposed to do uh, 2015, the NIST 800-171 was added, mm -hmm. but it was self-attested. Mm -hmm. People weren't doing that. In the DFARs. In the DFARs. Yeah, the FAR is anybody, anybody that gets federal money has FAR stuff that they need to pay attention to. Yeah, you guys jump so far ahead. The, the, <laughs> the viewer doesn't even know what the heck they're talking about. Let's there's put up the next slide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> far, there's far, a DFAR. Far, far and away. Far. There is far, a, far away. There's a FAR. So the okay. FAR. So in anyway, the read DFARs. your contract. <laughs> Can I do a time up for just a second? Sure. Anyone that is doing DOD work, okay. subcontractor or whatever, <laughs> needs to comply with. R and DFARS, yes, right? right? Yes. So that's what we're here to talk about. So if you are a contractor that is doing work for the federal government, these are DOD, these are the requirements, the regulations that you have to follow that they were going to get even tougher with starting next year. It makes and so much sense when he says it. The state of Hawaii. Well, why is this so many, relevant to us? Okay, how many contractors do you think we have in Hawaii that are servicing the military? Well, with. 11 bases in the state. Yeah, and that's quite a lot. So, yeah. And so and I'm throwing questions around just to get everybody interested in it. <laughs> if I have a cleaning crew that's cleaning an office building in the, in the federal space at DOD, does that cleaning crew have to be DFARS compliant? And then we're not talking about technology or, or writing code or anything like that. Can we get down? What about the landscapers? Well, they have to be compliant, but in, when we, we're talking about a specific parts of the DFARS clause. There's, there's other stuff in the DFARS. There's other, it's not right. just, other stuff. So not I'm just, just trying to clarify this. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So I'm just trying to clarify. Sure. There's a lot yep. of things that are going to get tougher next year. Sure. And we're going to cover the, 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 or the technical side. The information security system. Yeah, right. This is yeah, the yeah. funny part. I don't consider this tougher. Well, I consider this brain actually big. enforcing the toughness it's, that's been there for years. It's, it's <laughs> best practices. It's going to get real. Well, it's going to get no, real. Best practices was in the FAR. That's right. That was safeguarding. Yeah. Now, now nobody did that anyway. So now they said, "Oh, we're going to do. We're <laughs> going to we're we're gonna make it tougher, but easier." Uh, it depends yeah. on who you talk to. Hey, I equate this to, you uh, to driving cars in the early 20th century. We had cars, we had roads, and then we started having signs and lights, and, and people had to have uh, take a test to get a driver's license and minimum age. Then you had to take training before you got oh. your license. So it's it's a maturing process. I feel like I'm constantly taking tests now. <laughs> That's life. That's it is true. a maturity process. It is yes. a maturity process. And, and there's a reason why it's regulated. Now it's called the cybersecurity maturity model, yes. which is brand new to all of us, but uh, now it's going to be enforced. So yeah. that's what we're going to talk about. Let's put up another slide here. We're trying to keep the it simple. The slide we're just looking at. Okay, oh, so what we're family. looking at here is in DFARS, uh, one of the numbers you can see on a contract, usually page 12 you're saying, or somewhere around there, this DFARS, so there's a long number. At the end of it, it says 7012. 7012 says you need to comply with the National Institute of Standard and Technology, or NIST, 800-171, which is a document that breaks down a list of security controls that you need to apply to your company 
to keep yourself safe in the cybersecurity realm. And it's broken down by these 14 families right, right. here. And each family has a number of controls underneath that of how you apply these controls to cover this area. So access control will have about 26 or so controls. You apply those controls like multi-factor authentication, and you can check a box and say, yes, I comply. So out of these is 110 physical controls, but they can get rather detailed. Yeah. And it's hard to comply with all of these. And 110 apply to all of these 14 family members. There's somewhere in these families. Yes. So they try to make it simple by saying there's only 14 families and only 110 controls. It's but the controls in and of themselves get have multiple pieces to them. Yes. So. Oh, yeah. Let's move on. Let's see another slide and see if we talk about this. Now, here's where it gets real. In that 110 yes. controls, not all of them are stuff that you have to do. They're shared with vendors. Well, let's back up. Okay. Yeah. So in the DFARS claw, the 7012, which you ref, if you're using a cloud service provider or some of your services, your, IT services, or, there's, right. there's a reference for the, the CSP, cloud service provider, responsibility. Right. They have to be fed And ramp. that's, I forget that number, but it's in, it's ref in the 7012 document. And then you go read, of course, the CSP. CSP is what? And the cloud service cloud provider. Okay, thank so you. The cloud service I'm just trying provider. to keep English here. And, when, <laughs> and when, we, when we do these talks in these rooms, we, we ask how many people use, you know, Office 365. And, and by and large, I mean, 90, 99% yeah. of the hands come up. So, right. so there's your cloud service provider that's handling probably your email, perhaps your file storage. I don't know what else they may be doing for you. But when, when you do that, that's where these clause, this G and C clause for DFARS compliance comes from, is out of that cloud service provider right. responsibility. Um, now, those are the shared controls. Yeah, if we can have about. a slide so, so, back, it's a good one to talk about. It's a, it's a really about, good one to talk about. The GNC. The GNC, because here's the thing to point out. If, you're a, if you are a uh, contractor doing work for the DOD right now, and you are not Office 365 GCC high, you are already not compliant. Well, if, if you're handling CDI. If, yeah, and this is an assumption. If you're, Again, handling, yeah. if you're handling CDI yeah. or um, controlled unclassified information, mm -hmm. CUI. CUI, confidential information, mm -hmm. you have to be Office 365 GCC high. Yes. You That's have correct. no choice. I, do, I only know of um, a couple of clients on this island that are doing that better at this level of Office 365. Yep. So if they're saying, well, I'm running Office 365 E2, E1, E5, E5 yeah. Uh, home edition, you are not compliant, and you need to you need to be looking at moving to this now. Well, well let's let's so, back up again. So Office yeah. 365 without GCC, which is government community cloud, right? Um, that is the the regular service you can get, like E5, the enterprise right, level five right. commercial. It is compatible with 800-171. Yes. So with, you can be in this new cybersecurity module yeah. uh, maturity model. You can be level three. But you can't go beyond that because you can't comply with DFARS C and G, which somewhere in there it actually says if there's a cyber incident and you report it to us, to the DOD, we have the option to come and take your physical hard drives to forensically examine Correct. those. Uh, regular Office 365, you cannot do that cannot. because you're in a shared environment. You're, you're not, virtualized across the right. same machine. Yeah. You could be sharing the same hard drive with multiple people. So you have to move into GCC High, where you have a dedicated virtualized environment. Right. So you're, those hard drives are dedicated to just and, you. And, 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 you if you're, yeah, and if you're doing CDI or CUI, whatever, you have to be in that space. You have to be in that you space. Cannot, you cannot coast into GCC. Now here's oh, the part. there's no coasting. There's yeah. no coasting. <laughs> and here's the, here's the part, is the fact that you have to be a FedRAMP compliant mm -hmm. hosting facility. You, know, you have to find that. And you have to find uh, the people that sell these licenses. Because you can't go to the Microsoft well, website and say, I need 100 licenses of Office 365 GCC. Well, there's only like five vendors, there's in, only the US, five right? vendors in the U.S. that yeah. you can buy that from. That's, there's a, that's the only place. That's so awesome. get in line. <laughs> because, yeah. because those five vendors are getting... Yeah, it does buried. take a while to, to build the environment out for you as well. And then, right. you, then you have to move like all of your mail over to that. You've got to, to migrate new, all of your mail new, new over to that new one and all the data and yeah. everything that goes there. So, yeah, so it's... it's, it's Phase one, and you should be looking at it now. Yeah, it, it was and an open up your checkbook. It was an important point you made. The, the C, the DFARS C, is actually the one that says if there is a, a, a breach, you've got to notify the government within 72 hours. So you don't get that if you're not in GCC high from Microsoft yeah. or from your provider. They don't have that capacity to alert you. So therefore, yeah. you'd be in violation when you come to the government 
six months later, go, oh, by the way, we had a breach six months ago. They'd yeah. be like, boom. Boom, you're done. And then the G is the one for the, um, if they decide to investigate, we've got to turn over yeah. the uh, material. They've got to comply material. with a lot more regulations yeah. than the regular. Well, the There's a good thing on this slide, though, that so in G as of as of January, they they waived that minimum 500 license. Correct. That would put a lot of small businesses out of business. Correct. Because these are a little pricier type of licenses than they are. the regular license. And you're going to pay you're going to pay for an office, let's say, of 100. Um, you're going your annual fee is going to be somewhere between. Seventy-five to eighty thousand dollars a year. <laughs> and, so you're gonna make uh, some serious money. Yeah. The, so this yeah, is, yeah. Now well, the, the good news is you can also pass that that cost you, on to right. the government. You, the government. Yeah. 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 But we ha they haven't spelled out all the, the hoops you're gonna have to jump through in order for you to, to justify get that reimbursement. So the the yeah. other part I think it's real important is you know you are compliant, but you still have to have proper licensing. You got to do system design. Yep. And you got to configure all those shared controls. It's Correct. not just like oh. They got me covered. No, nope. there may be stuff on your end that you have yep. to do. Yep. And then the policy controls also have to be written. Your domain controllers are going to get modified. Oh yeah. When you move to GCC High, it automatically modifies your, some of your domain controllers. Mm -hmm. Your Active Directory gets modified. There's a lot of things that happen that prohibit you from doing things that you could do in the past. Yep. Right. I.e., install software on my laptop. <laughs> no way anymore. It has to be an admin. Well, a system admin, they're the only ones that can do it. So you imagine if you got... Which it ought to be anyway. anyway I'm just hoping. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it should be anyway. No, but how, no, many, how many clients or organizations have I gone into where they've got... Um, uh, Everyone's they, an admin. Where they yeah. Got, yeah, they've got you know, the subject matter expert mm -hmm. who's an admin in that particular office who's stall, installing software. Mm -hmm. That don't work anymore. You can't do that. You can't, it's not going to happen. So... So you got to look at ways to do this. So this is a, this is a barrier to entry for many small companies. Yeah. Like this is a, an important obstacle yeah. that you're going to have to overcome. However, the, the good news, I think, is if you have a contract that requires this and you have multiple renewal years, what I've been understanding in some of these webinars we've been looking at is you will most likely be able to institute a change order once you've invested this money to come up to compliance. Right. That change order will uh, reimburse you for the cost of coming up to that level of compliance. The level of compliance, which we'll talk about in a minute, the CMMC level, if you're going for level three. If you come up to level three and you have to go into the GCC environment, it costs you 150 grand. That's a change order. You can put that in. You will probably get that money back, but it's going to take a while. So, but well, but, you would have to show what percentage of work out of your office is going against that contract. It's the so, delta. So, yeah, that's the, so it's kind of like if, if I'm an E5 mm -hmm. and I go to GCC high, are they going to give me the whole amount or are they no. going to give me the delta between E and the difference? The difference, yeah. okay? It, and in some cases, it's the delta worth all the aggravation, all the work that yeah. you're going to have to go through to get well, that. Sure is. So, so you, can always, you can also go by your percentage of volume. So let's just say you do $10 million a year and yeah. you get a $1 million contract, 10% of your cost to therefore easily be justified right. to have gone to that right. customer. Now, you know, do I have to start tracking this in my financials? Every time I purchase something or acquire something, do I have to say, put an asterisk beside it, say, I only did that because of, of um, having to be compliant? I would. Well, I think, I think that the, <laughs> I would. I think that the, the GCC high licensing cost, the CPU, and the storage, um, yes, I think for sure. I mean, you're not going to be able to say, oh, I had to have a laptop because they, they know you need a computer. You yeah, need right. it for no matter what. I mean, well. No, but, but to be FedRAMP compliant, cost, yeah. Yeah, to go to FedRAMP costs me more money than standing it on Microsoft's regular shared service. Exactly. And all you're going to get is that difference in that cost, not the entire cost of being GCC high. But I would so take Gordon's advice uh, going forward. Asterisk next to everything. Yeah, that asterisk and just say yes, yes, yes. Well, and it's again, like it's, not a, your car. it's yeah. also not a requirement yet because it's not audited. It's not in the contract. So, Soon. like. So in September of 2020, when it says you must be level three to bid on this contract, now you got full justification. Okay, let's talk about that right after the break. We're going to go away for a couple of minutes. We'll come right back. Until then, stay safe. Hello, everybody. My name is Walter Kawai. I, uh, I'm your host for our monthly uh, live streaming video uh, entitled Ukulele Songs of Hawaii where I bring on guests. We enjoy talking story about the music industry here in Hawaii. Uh, sometimes going back uh, 50 decades, if possible, and uh, always having some good fun talking with entertainers. We're here located at Think Tech Hawaii, downtown Honolulu at the Pioneer Plaza building and uh, in their studios. And so join me next month for Ukulele Songs of Hawaii. Aloha. 
My name is Wendy Lowe, and I want you to join me as we take our health back. On my show, all we do is talk about things in everyday life, in Hawaii or abroad. I have guests on board that will just talk about different aspects of health in every, in every way, whether it's medical health, nutritional health, diabetic health, you name it, we'll talk about it, even financial health. We'll even have some of the Miss Hawaii's on board and all the different topics that I feel will make your health and your lifestyle a lot better. So come join me. I welcome you to take your health back. Mahalo. Welcome back to Cyber Underground. I hope you missed us and you stayed safe. We're here with Andrew and Gordo, <laughs> the techs are and uh, from IST uh, Physical and Electronic Security, Andrew Lanning. So where were we? We're talking about the cost and how to recoup the cost and when this is gonna be actually required. So from the webinars we've been watching, there's gonna be a third party. So it's required right now, just let's make that clear. It's required, but you self-attest. And you've someone's been already been caught self-attesting and lying and they were fined three quarters <gasps> of a million dollars. Surprise. Whistle Somebody actually Boom. got caught. Whistleblower. Whistleblower. Yeah, nobody actually went and audited that company. So it had to be a whistleblower. It was a whistleblower. So it, uh, in uh, September, they're going to come out with a new document, which uh, is so, the 800 171 version B, which raises the stakes. And we can look at a slide here. We're going to see the slide here. Let's put up the slide. <laughs> okay, let's speak to this slide first. This is Andrew's slide. Yeah, this is good. Um, this tells you we've got about 150 cloud service providers operating in the FedRAMP environment. It tells you how much money is flowing through there. Uh, about a third of the world's internet traffic is flowing through FedRAMP. So the important thing is what we've got is a, a, a good long track record of good security and good practice compared with the other environments which are not as secure. Mm -hmm. So I like, I like people to understand something about why the government's pushing us here. They, this didn't just, somebody didn't just dream this up last week. This has been going on for years and years and years. And since self-attestation didn't work, like they, you remember how they said, make sure you strap your seatbelt on when they pass seatbelt laws. Nobody yeah. did that either, so they had to start giving you a ticket. So that's why we're going to start auditing to make sure you get there because the government needs its information. Well, we're going to talk about how we're going to audit. Uh, let's roll to the next slide. So, yeah. So here's the new cybersecurity maturity model certification levels. So you'd, You'd see this on your contract as a requirement when you're doing a request uh, for information, uh, RFP, RFI. RFP. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to send in uh, something in response to a contract that says that you need to be CMM uh, C level three. What does that mean? So currently the 800-171 revision one, that's the NIST document. If you comply with all the 110 controls out there right now, you can come up to CMM C level three. The new document 800-171B is coming out in September, supposedly, we hope, and it will contain another few controls to get levels four and five. So uh, guys, let's talk about these levels and how we're gonna get certified. Uh, these levels, I don't think anyone has to, I don't know, get afraid or have a lot of anxiety because CMMC level one is a good basic cyber hygiene posture for a small business. Yeah, and it's you might not be able to make the it basic more. safeguarding controls are covered. You might see yeah. that on your contract. Yeah. Um, level two and three is going to be bigger contracts, uh, more CUI floating around, or you're a downstream vendor for uh, a bigger prime. But I'll rest my case on the fact that CMMC level one, that a significant number of, of companies here in the state of Hawaii that don't do government work are not CMC. Even the ones that do level do one are not at that level. Government. And they should be, because that's, be. that's, that's basic. Yeah. And so, but I can guarantee you that I could walk into some client and say, let's walk through the 110. I'll do a, we'll do an evaluation right now. Give us, give me four hours. We'll do a self-evaluation and we'll see where you're at on that. We'll just go down the list of 110. Take about four hours and we'll, 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 I'll give you a graph and show you where you sit. And then you, <laughs> then you can have anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, yeah. uh, this shouldn't really cause you anxiety right this minute if you uh, look at the control set and start complying now. Because it doesn't just apply to primes. It's everybody that's under the prime. It's a downstream effect. Yep. If you're anywhere near uh, these vendors, if you're doing any business with the big, you know, if Lockheed Martin's got a contract and you give them washers and nuts and bolts, you're one of the vendors. You're a sub and you're there. You're and there. if you have subs, you got to make sure. you got to make so, sure. So if you're the yeah. sub of the prime and you have, 
And you and you're, you have subs underneath you. You have to assure that your subs are compliant. That's right. Um, and this is going to become required as of uh, January. They're going to okay. So here's the process. Yeah. The DoD will hire uh, or get uh, a third party vendor to do uh, kind of a train the trainer thing with CMMC providers. There'll be so a non-profit companies that do the certification will be trained by this non-profit organization. Yeah. That's going to happen sometime around between September and January. January is when they're going to kick off this training and people can sign up to be one of these CMMC certifiers. Which I understand. I want to be you one. Want to be one of those. So. I might be too. So maybe we you and I'll partner. I don't That'd know. be wonderful. Yeah, Let's do so, that. So. Uh, I don't even know how to sign up yet. They don't have Neither, that I'm looking. I don't well, have no it either. Yeah, there's no yeah, application. As, yeah. as of January, that's just when they're training people to do this certification. It's not going to become required to do an RFI or RFP until about September of next year. Well, rewind. No, RFI, according to the documentation, you know, the cl class I took on Monday, Okay. Um, RFIs are June of next year. It's June of next so year. So June of next year, if you want to respond to an RFI, you have to be audited by then. That's going to be tough. That's going to be really tough. But yeah. that's, that, that, not, that date did not change as of the update Monday. And then if RFPs are September. Yeah. So... So, but the date did not change as of Monday of this week. Yeah, and remember, the contracting officers have full authority to waive that. So, you know, if we, we all sitting here know there's going to be a backlog, right? There's 300,000 DIB companies to be certified. DIB? That's industrial base. Okay, I'm just making sure we're yeah, speaking. So, in, in that supply chain, the, the scrutiny has come down on the supply chain. Most of those big primes we talked about, Lockheed, Raytheon, BAE, these guys are handling secret, top secret material already. They are already handling the full NIST 850. Three stack, yeah, seven, 1,700 controls. So That's they're up that, but their supply chain is what's brought this scrutiny yeah, uh, right. to bear. Um, the supply chain's leaking a lot of information. Well, out to back up for a second, this is this is a, a security standard, right? It's, yes. If Lockheed Martin is your actual target. Let's pretend that's the castle with sure. the king inside. You're not going to storm the front gate. No. no. You're going to wait till the cook comes out the back gate to throw out the trash, and you're going to go in there. Storm yeah. That's your gate. vendor. <laughs> so you go after a vendor, sure. and the vendor's your easy pivot point into your castle. And a good example that, that people have, have already experienced is these movies that got leaked before they were released. Oh, sure. And, and it wasn't because it, get, it got to Disney or Pixar or whatever. It was some little two-person shop somewhere that was doing the final little bit of edits on CGI uh, on sound, the, the sound color, thing, tweaking a little few things. They went there and they got them there. That's where they pulled it out of. And this is what's the whole point on this is that they're not going to go after the big guy. They're going to look for the little small guy down the food chain. Yeah. Yeah. It, the unfortunate thing is that uh, the large volume of small businesses here in the state and I think across the country. 27,000 small businesses. In the there are a great number of them that are two, three, four, even one person. Mm -hmm. So to do this, NIST 800 with very few people, that's going to be a challenge. Yeah. And the separation of duties, first of all. I mean, how do you yeah. separate? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 separate yeah. duties, separating of networks, separating of infrastructure, separating of firewalls. I mean, we have these different depends. accounts, right? Yeah. So you have to have an admin account, then you have to have your user account, blah, 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 blah. Right. Blah. There's so privileged like, access and sure. non-privileged yeah. access. And that's so, tough for small companies. Yeah, yeah. Well, That's a just, lot of extra work. Just think if you're a parent company and then you've got all these subs, and of which, of which one of these subs is doing um, dib work, yep. right? Yep, something that's Then, then this little the sub, either you've got to have to bring this entire organization up, yep. or this little sub's going to have to spin off well, you to, could, be, to be compliant. I think one of the other tactics is to make them, uh, let them have a, a client on your environment. Right. You so that way you, you can yeah. put your controls down on them. If, if it's just one or two people that you're quite confident can't handle this material. I mean, that means that you have to have a desk at your office, whatever it may be. Yeah. It depends on how much, but what you level gotta, of control But you've got to look at your, if you look at those 110 items in there, you got to look at this. You cannot share um, routers and switches. Oh, no. With non-compliant. With non, non -compliant. Sure. So if I'm, if I'm a little sub-company of this major company mm -hmm. and I'm sharing all the router switches and firewalls, that's got to get spun off. Yeah, you need, your, you need you a gotta stand up your static own. connection. So uh, Citibank had this problem and uh, how they, they handled it was, they virtualized the desktop in a central location. Mm -hmm. So you would log in via a, a VPN and sure. they would transmit the desktop to your personal computer. Yeah, like an instance. And you're locked in that virtual you're environment. You're in that environment. Period. You can't even use your home printer. Yeah. So that's how they, they handle that. Mm -hmm. So when that vendor comes in, they might not be compliant, but when they work for you, they're actually seeing information in your environment. You're just yeah. transmitting the text and graphics sure. to them. Yeah, and I like that virtual instance idea too. I mean, that's kind of going back to the old mainframe 
uh, sort of mainframe topology. I, right? I like Where the full circle loop. Everything sort of we runs got out away of from mainframes, and now we're going yeah, right you back to mainframes. Virtual you got to buy it. And I started my career on it, and I'm going to my clients. Okay, <laughs> maybe you ought to buy a Z. You go, well, that's a, that's a mainframe. Yeah, but a mainframe sells for $100,000 now, not like a million dollars like it did way back yeah, when. That's yeah, true. Yeah. And you can run Linux on it, which is part of the other dilemma. Well, you could just yeah. run it in the cloud. I mean, you know, if you, you can fed ramp the environment you're talking about, it's you can actually, run it right out of FedRAMP. I'm ramp. finding it's better to run in the cloud. There's no FedRAMP in Hawaii. No, no, there's no provider. Not physically, no. no. But uh, the, you're using Summit 7. Yeah. So Summit 7 can move you into right. the GCC yeah. environment. But depending yes. on your application, though, depending on your application, latency can be an issue. Oh, we those. must also mention that you can't just go to Microsoft or Summit 7 and say, hey, give me this. No. you got to walk in with a contract yeah. that says it's required for you. Yeah, yeah. you got to show them the, the And cost. then wait four months. Uh, it took me a day. It took you a day? That one day. Well, one day. They you told, don't know who to email to. They told us, they told us, <laughs> they told, well, they're telling me it's, it can be upwards of four months, but we're usually doing it within one. Yeah, it was one day for us. I, I can send you. So it's like Scotty I'll on the email. Yeah, I'll send it's you. It's going to take eight hours, too. and we'll do it in okay, one. Yeah, let's do this. We'll get bombarded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll call her. So, for these uh, minor, minor, all just, email to mine are all stood up. What's the first step? Or, oh, get out of get out of DoD contracts. <laughs> so, so, no more Fed. So, obviously, the, I think the I think the first step is an assessment, right? I mean, you need you need to do some sort of a risk assessment on your environment. All yes. this stuff is risk based anyway. So, you need to have a strategy, right? Uh, as a company, for what your information security system is going to do. My suggestion: support the U.S. cybersecurity strategy. What's wrong with that, right? That's a, a good strategy is to support them if they're your customer. Um, so you can download that U.S. cybersecurity strategy document. It was came out in, uh, I think, October of last year, so it's pretty fresh. Um, and then align yourself with that. And, and, and most of this guidance that we're talking about is really laid out there for you. And I think if you step through that, I think you'll see like those 17 basics we talked about, those kind of align with the CSC top 20. So there's, you know, if you're not in the DOD space and you want to understand how to get started, you can look at for this, what is it, Center for Internet Security, CIS uh, top 20. And they have, of these controls, if you just look at them and start with number one, number two, number three, and work, work your way through them, you can get to a reasonable level of cyber hygiene, you know, and, and that's a start if you've done nothing. Um, so I recommend people do that. Now, if you're in the defense industrial base, of course, you're subject to all these regulations that we're talking about, and it's uh, fine. What is it under false, what was the one in the California False Claims Act? Oh, gosh, uh, I can't remember. It was, I think they were sued under the False Claims Act because they right. had, had self-attested self and, they, and, and they lied. So fair enough. So, so that's I mean, you know, that's 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 what I do to get started anyway. And there's there there is out there and um and it's free is um you know if you just took that 110 mm -hmm. controls, sure. there's actually a, a document out there that's free that you can you can get you can download it. It's in Excel. You can self evaluate mm -hmm. and be honest with yourself. And it, it will at the end it gives you a report. If it tables it out, a report shows you you're 37 percent compliant. You've got 25 percent in process, and the rest of these you're not compliant. Yeah. So now you have to decide, okay, now what do I got to do with the ones that I'm not compliant? You make a poem, a uh, yeah. plan of action, and milestones. Milestone. Right, yeah. and, and so that documents are there, and you know what, you should be doing that now. Whether you're, whether this, you've got federal contracts or whatever, with all the stuff that's going on, yep. you should be doing it now. Yeah. All of this, this stuff we're talking about is basic hygiene. Yep. It's a start. We're getting the cue to close down the show. Awesome. Uh, 15 seconds, you guys want to say your last words before we get out of here? I think I just said mine. Okay. All right. <laughs> Work on it. Get started. All right, everybody. Today we had uh, the tech czar and Andrew, the security guy. Also, Security Matters is Andrew's show. It's Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Right? 10 a.m. And it's also on YouTube. We have full playlists of both this Cyber Underground and Security Matters. And if you want to see some great stuff, go back and watch Hibachi Talk. <laughs> Yeah. Which is the show that we both spun off of. That yeah. was Gordo's show. It was Angus's and, show. And if anybody's <laughs> watching Angus out there, show. go see Hibachi Talk and then come back on my show on YouTube and put a comment down. Tell me who um, Angus is. Yeah. I want to know who Angus was. Awesome. <laughs> Let me know. Uh, and we'll be back in a couple of weeks, everybody. We're going to change the time to Thursdays at 12 noon in September, and we'll see you then. Until then, stay safe.